In this video, I'm discussing how I made my first $10,000 in two weeks as a brand new recruiting agency owner. Hey, what's up YouTube? It's Natasha, the business recruiter. Welcome to my channel. If you are brand new, then I discuss everything related to recruiting from landing your dream job to starting your own agency. And if you are not subscribed already, then I encourage you to go down below, hit that subscribe button as well as that bell so that you can get notified of all of my new videos that drop each week. I will also leave the link for my Facebook group down below as well. I encourage you to join if you haven't already. We are in there talking all things recruiting. So my first $10,000 as a brand new recruiting agency owner is not your typical story. I was still brand new and had no idea what I was really doing. So I didn't go through methods such as cold emailing or cold calling like many recruiting experts out there would recommend. What I did instead was take an inventory of my network or my sphere of influence. The first thing that I did was create a list of criteria that I felt would be helpful in order for me to be able to land my first paying client. The original list that I made had about 10 items on there and I felt like that was too long. So I went through the list again and narrowed it down to three items that I felt would be extremely important as I look for potential clients. The first was that the person had to be in a position of influence or power or they had to know someone else who was in a position of influence or power. I just felt like this would help me to expedite the process of me actually being able to sign a client. The next thing was that their company or the organization that they work for had to actually be actively looking to fill requisitions. I checked this by actually taking a look at Indeed. So the individuals who I was thinking about working with, I made sure that the companies or the organizations that they work for actually had open requisitions on Indeed. And then the third and final criteria, and maybe the most important for me, at least at the time as I was starting out, was the fact that I had to feel that I had the knowledge, skills, and abilities to be able to fill the open requisitions that were then at that time listed on Indeed. So if I felt like the requisitions that were open were for positions that I really didn't feel I had the expertise in order to be able to fill, such as nursing. I've never worked in the nursing industry before, so I wouldn't have any experience to be able to close that deal quickly. Then I would bypass those individuals and I just focused on those positions that I actually knew I had the skill set in order to be able to close. So I used that criteria and I came up with a list of individuals who I felt met all three of those aspects. So I created the list and there were only five individuals on there. And I know that does not seem like a lot, but stay with me because the story does get good. And it's a really good lesson on how you can actually leverage referrals, even if you have a small network. So I reached out to each of them via phone in order to have a conversation about the recruiting services that I offered. Now at this time, I had not chosen a niche, so I was pretty broad in terms of what I was actually able to recruit for. And part of it was because I was just starting out, I didn't want to narrow my opportunities in terms of what I could actually do, especially in the beginning. So after having the conversations, four out of the five didn't necessarily say yes to taking me on in terms of the services that I provided, um, but they didn't necessarily say no either. And the one individual who actually ended up being a good friend of mine was able to recommend me to someone who they knew was actively looking to fill a role at the time. So I got that person's contact information and was able to reach out to them the same day. After that conversation, I was able to send them over a contract by the end of the night. Now, if you're just starting out and trying to get your contract together, then that is something that I can help with. I have a free contract template that you can leverage in order to get clients signed today. Simply join my Facebook group, which I've already linked down below in the description box and send me a DM with the word contract and I'll be sure to get it over to you. Okay, so back to the story. So I was able to get the contract signed and back to me within about two days. At this point, it was time for me to actually start recruiting for the position. So I ended up setting up a call with the hiring manager. Now the hiring manager for this position was not the same individual who actually signed the contract. So we discussed all of the details about the position and they were actually looking for an accounts receivable manager. I got all of the information that I needed and literally went to work in terms of posting ads on Indeed, as well as leveraging LinkedIn in order to do a targeted search to fill this position. It took about four or five days, but I was able to line up about six qualified candidates. 
Now, of course, I did my own screening process and had conversations with each of those individuals after I reached out. And after those conversations, I was able to narrow down those six qualified candidates to three who I felt would be really good for the position that the company was looking to fill. So I sent those three candidates over to my client. They completed interviews with each of them. Two of them actually moved to final round interviews and then one was actually chosen in terms of wanting to submit an offer to. And at that point, I was super excited. I could not believe that in that short amount of time that I was actually able to not only get a contract signed, get candidates over, but to also get an offer from the company for one of the candidates that I had sent over. But I knew that I wasn't at the finish line yet. In terms of next steps, I knew that the candidate that I sent over had to complete a background check. They actually had to get the official offer over to them. And the candidate actually had to accept that offer and start at the company in order for me to actually get paid. So that whole process took about five days. The candidate did go back and forth and negotiate a bit. So the final salary ended up being a little over over 69,700 that that particular candidate received. And I had a 15% placement fee that was embedded within my contract. Now my contract had net 30 payment terms. This means that the company had 30 days from the date that I actually sent them the invoice in order to be able to pay me. I sent the invoice, I believe it was a Monday because that's when the candidate's first day was. And I usually send my invoices on the first day that they actually start at the company. And by the end of the week, I had received a check in the mail for a little over $10,450. For me, it was a great lesson on taking a leap of faith. I didn't have everything together with my business. At this point, I'll be honest, I don't even think I had a website, but I knew that I wanted to get started. It was also a great lesson for me in terms of the power of your network. I could have went the route of doing cold emailing or cold calling like many recruiting experts out there suggest. However, at the time, I didn't really feel comfortable with those particular methods. So I pretty much defaulted to what I knew, which was to reach out to those individuals who I already knew. And I think the important point about that is that you can honestly do the same thing. You may not have the secret sauce associated with sending the perfect cold email or knowing the script in terms of having the perfect cold call, but everyone has a network. Everybody knows somebody. So my advice would be to take the time to really think about who is within your sphere of influence. Who do you know? And based on the criteria that I discussed in the beginning of this video, who would fit that? And to throw some extra motivation in there before you exit out of this video, remember, your network equals your net worth. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one.